Is it best recorded? Is it recording? Yeah. Oh. My name's April Jones, my candidate number is 7557 and this is my evaluation. So for the first question, um, in what ways does your media product use develop or challenge forms and conventions of your media products? Um, my media product, in many ways, uses key forms of conventions um, of real media products, such as the use of costume and mise-en-scene. Um, the main theme for my media product is youth culture, and this was the stimulus for my product. Um, and it started, it was the stimulus that started off my production. So through this, I had to research into youth culture of today's society and intertwine it with relevant factors from normal productions. Um, I analysed all different films that were similar to the genre that I was looking into, so youth culture. Um, I decided with the rest of my group that we were going to have a collaboration of mystery, thriller and horror genres. Um, and we analysed The Woman in Black as it was relevant to them genres and it kind of had all them genres tied into each other. We looked at youth conventions um, and the main thing we looked at was youth downfall or disequilibrium. Um, we looked into Quadrophenia and Sweet Sixteen and we was able to recognise from them two films the sort of catalyst events which create the downfall and the disequilibrium. Um, the narrative for the film trailer was really complex as it, it requires a lot of in-depth understanding and knowledge and it takes up a lot of your time. Um, but we looked at The Woman in Black and we decided that we wanted something similar to that narrative. Um, the initial idea for us was to have students disappearing from a sort of rundown and deprived area and then another student begins to investigate and, and unfold the mystery that's going on but he eventually loses himself in it. Um, this is kind of similar to The Woman in Black because um, the protagonist in the film investigates um, like a house and stuff and takes the matter into his own hands. But then we, decide, we decided to change it and we decided that um, we wanted a crazy substitute teacher who loses her sanity and then ends up holding a class hostage. Um, and our protagonist plays the sort of hero type character and tries to save the, the children who are the victims within the film trailer. Um, we think it's quite relevant to youth trailer, youth culture story because um, it will have students in it and the setting will be in a school which is quite relevant because the age that it was aimed at, sort of 15 years age, um, is, is kind of conventional for children of that age to be in school and it kind of unfolds the, the fear of trusting your teachers and touching on that kind of fear that most parents and maybe even students would have. Um, the Equilibrium is a narrative which is dis disturbed by a catalyst event which causes disequilibrium, causes a disequilibrium which I spoke about earlier. And this is kind of, it maps out and how it kind of unfolds and is just basically the narrative of a film. Um, production companies, I looked at three of them which I included in my film trailer. Um, Lionsgate is an industry lead, is an, is an industry leader in the marketing and distribution of packaged media and, di and digital entertainment. They um, involve themselves in films such as um, The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Twilight, Breaking Dawn. Um, Miramax, they involve themselves in films such as um, The Dusk of Dawn, The Vampires, um, and Studio Canal involve themselves in films such as In Fear, so they all tie in with the genre of mis mystery, thriller, horror. So using them, it was very relevant to the sort of um, genre and youth culture stuff that we was looking at. Um, the target audience for my film trailer was 15. Um, we looked into the British Board of Film Classification who regulate 
films and we looked at um, certain factors like imitable behaviour, horror, threat, that kind of stuff. Um, and that's how we came to the decision of rating it at 15 because we believed that our film trailer did have um, elements that the BBFC included in the rating of 15. So we decided that as it did pose a threat and quite ho like horror images and stuff, we decided to keep it as a 15. Um, for the characters, we have antagonist, victim, and protagonist. The antagonist, um, I wanted to keep it similar to The Woman in Black, as um, I believe in many different media platforms, women are quite disempowered, and they have like an irrational voice, and often um, you view media products through the male gaze, and I wanted to challenge this, just like what The Woman in Black does. So um, my antagonist was a female character, who is therefore empowered instead of being disempowered. The victim is similar to the woman in black also because their victims are children and so are the ones in my film trailer. The protagonist is also similar as it's a man um, who plays the hero type character and tries to save the victims from the antagonist. Um, yeah. Um, the conventions that I found from a mystery, thriller and horror film um, were things like colours and location. So for the colours it would be like dark grey colours such as blacks, reds, dark blues, greys, that kind of stuff. For the location, um, there's quite typical locations for horror and mystery um, films such as like houses or parks. So it's like these are meant to be quite safe places for people to go to, especially children. But um, in horror films, these are played with and uh, manipulated to make them seem like quite dark and grave places and things that you should kind of fear. Um, for costume, as we are basing it in a school, we decided to have it as a school uniform. Um, the props, we used um, a weapon, which is a hammer. And we also use the radio, so it kind of connotes the hero type character of the protagonist. Um, for the editing, in a lot of horror um, films, there's a lot of jump cuts and fast paced editing. So um, that kind of builds up the suspense and tension that you get from horror th um, films. And we wanted to connote that through our trailer. Um, the music track is conventional um, in the sense that it's meant to build up suspense. So um, it's really kind of slow and eerie and it, it kind of drags out a little bit but then it gets to a point where it builds up and then it kind of causes this suspense and thrill um, for the target audience and that's kind of what we wanted to do. And also the script as well, um, it kind of narrates what's going on. In our film trailer we didn't want a lot of dialogue to be used because we sort of thought the um, image that the audience will be seeing that will direct what is actually happening within the film trailer. And the second question, how effective is the combination of your main products and ancillary texts? Um, this is screenshots of my film poster, my film website, the trailer and the title of our film trailer. Um, we had a lot of continuity in the way we use colours, um, the font style and the images. So you can recognise here that um, the victims are sitting on chairs and that's also what we used for the film poster. Um, and for the colours, we, we kind of stuck to reds, blacks and greens as it connotes the horror, thriller, mystery kind of feeling and attitude we wanted to give to our audiences. Um, and we kind of compared this to The Woman in Black and we saw that they also... Um, kept the continuity in the colours that they used and the fonts and also the images so you can see Daniel Radcliffe in everything so it makes it recognisable. And then on my blog I demonstrated this and did an in-depth analysis of how I showed um, the continuity of the ancillary sentences. For the third question, what have you learned from your audience feedback. We um, gave out a questionnaire and we asked various questions and we asked them to rate our film trailer out of five. 
Um, so starting from one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. Um, this is a kind of overview, so everyone, this is what they decided. So um, some people kind of kept it to one and two stars, like so they probably didn't really like it a lot, but a lot of people, three and upwards, so it showed that our film trailer was quite appealing and um, they must have enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, I broke it down into male and female to see which gender it appealed to more, and we found that um, it appealed more to females. Um, so in the five star rating, we had a lot more females than males saying that they would rate it five star, so we found that maybe it's more appealing to females rather than males. Um, we also asked, did, we, did you enjoy the trailer? And then we broke this up into um, the age of the audience we were asking. As ours was a 15, we thought we should ask people who are younger just to see if they, if they would enjoy it, perhaps. Um, a lot of the no's came from the children who were under 15, and it kind of, kind of showed that um, our, decision, our decision of having it at 15 plus was correct, because maybe they didn't perhaps understand the narrative um, and the intentions of our film. Um, this is a few um, words and phrases that we got from our questionnaire, and here also. And um, what we learned from it is that um, maybe if we used a bit more dialogue during the film trailer, that perhaps they would have understood it better. Um, for the last question, how did you use media technologies in the construction and research planning and evaluation stages? Um, first of all, digital editing. We used Photoshop and Final Cut um, Pro X. Um, Photoshop we used for creating our poster. Um, we took on various tasks beforehand, such as creating a CD album cover. And we also used Beyonce Nas and Ryan Gosling to manipulate images and make them seem quite realistic. Um, and that kind of de developed and helped us understand how to use it. It was the same with Final Cut Pro, only we had to look at YouTube clips um, to understand how to use it properly. With the equipment, we used things such as the green screen, the HD camera, lighting board, and the Mac. Um, with the green screen, it helped us to create the poster so it was easy to cut around the images, and that's what we used Photoshop for. So, um, yeah, that made it a lot easier. With the HD camera, we videoed the clips with the HD camera and then uploaded it onto the Mac. Um, with the Mac, that's where we used Final Cut Pro and it was our source of editing um, the whole film trailer, so it was the only thing we used to edit the film trailer. Um, we also used the lighting board to connote the um, kind of mystery thriller feelings in the film trailer. We also had a week-by-week -week breakdown where we organised on which day and which week we would do each task. Um, we also use social media, so Prezi to present our ideas. We, um, we synergized a lot of the social media such as Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube and Vine. Um, so we included them in our film trailers and we also included them on our posters and stuff like that. Um, we created our website using Wix and we created our blog using Weebly and this helped us to understand um, the new media platforms and how we could integrate them all together. Um, and then this is also another breakdown of how we organised our time and what we were going to do during the process of our film trailer. And then this is just a few clips demonstrating what we actually did. Thank you. Oh, lovely. Um, okay, I'm going to launch straight in. Um, I'm going to talk about. I'm going to ask you about convergence. You were saying before how you were integrating your various different media's, but can you explain to me what benefit the audience gets from it? Um, so, if they want to understand more about the film, so the narrative, as I said, it wasn't very clear to younger audiences. Um, they can look at say the film poster or look on our website or our blogs and they'll be able to read more in depth about what's going on and then um, they're able to to like get a better understanding of how like what's actually going on what the narrative is what's going on in the film trailer um, perhaps 
they want to find out more about the actors or um, the locations that we filmed in, stuff like that, they'll be able to find it on them different media platforms. Is there anything you would do differently if you had the opportunity again? If I did, I would include a lot more um, speech dialogue to narrate the film. I think that was the main flaw of our film trailer. Um, it would have been better as it directed the film and gave the audience a better idea of what is actually going on. Um, because from the questionnaire, we kind of understood that they didn't understand what was going on, whereas we, we had done the breakdown, so we had a clear understanding of what was going on. They only saw the film trailer and the poster and that, so they didn't really understand the breakdown thoroughly and as much as we did. So if I could go back, I would do that. So you're saying they understand the narrative? They didn't understand. The narrative. Yeah, they didn't understand the narrative. Did they understand the conventions or the characters? Um, you they they or? did. Um, on the questionnaire, we asked them to tick which um, characters they recognise and perhaps recognised from other films and they did tick uh, protagonist, antagonist, victim um, and they also tick things such as imitable behaviour and threat and horror. Cool. Well, thank thank, you, thank you, very you very much April. Well done. <laughs> That's really scary. Can you reach it? Yeah. <laughs> what do I press? Just the red button. There it's done.